Kia ora, I'm Cindy, and it's time to dig a little deeper into the Word. Now, it is the first week of our breaking news, and I'm super excited for what we're going to be discovering this term. And we've already had the inside scoop on what today's message is. And so before we do the diving deeper, I just want to ask you a question. Do you have a future dream? Is there something that you dream of? Maybe you haven't even told anyone. Perhaps it's a future event. It might be a place that you want to travel. Maybe it's an occupation that you'd like to have. I want you to think about that dream and why you have that dream. Now, you might not know this, but I was not born in New Zealand. I was born in Canada. And when I was a child, we came to New Zealand. And that is where I met Jesus and my family as well. Well, we didn't stay in New Zealand for very long, really. When I was nearly 11, we had to leave and go back to Canada. And I believe I had a future dream, something that I really felt God was giving to me. I knew that one day I was going to come back to New Zealand. And I told my parents many times, I don't know when, I don't know how, but I know that I'm coming back to New Zealand one day. Well, here I am, so it must have come true. Now, maybe if your future involves some travel, you can stick your hand up. All right, if your future job involves technology, then stick your hands up. Okay, if your future job we, uh, would be an achievement, raise your hand. Great, I can see that there are some real potential there for what um, you guys are gonna become one day. And that's awesome. Maybe even some one of you will be involved in the church one day, like I am. Anyway, today's story is kind of one that seems impossible, but it's true, all of it. Even the stuff that maybe doesn't make sense or you just go, no, there's no way that that could possibly happen. You see, Abraham and Sarah had a deep desire to have children, but they were already quite old and they had none. Abraham was actually 75 years old when God first gave to him his future dream. And God had said to him that I want you to go to a new land. And when you do, I will bless you and make you into a great nation. Here's Abraham. He's like 75 years old and Sarah's 65 old enough to be grandparents, and yet they don't even have a child of their own yet. Imagine being that age even and having to pack up everything, move away from your family, from your friends, from everything that you've known, and you've got to just pack your belongings and whatever you can carry on the back of a donkey or something like that. And that's exactly what Abraham and Sarah did. Only at this point, their names aren't actually Abraham and Sarah. They're Abram and Sarai. If you want to find out more of this story, I encourage you to open up your Bibles later, take a look and read it, because I can't tell you all of it today. Anyway, they made that really hard decision to move, and they did. And when they entered into the new land, God reinforced that promised future to Abraham and said to him, I will make your children like the dust of the earth. Can du dust be counted? Well, if they can, then your children can be counted. What an awesome promise God has given to Abram and Sarai. And yet they still don't have any children. I like to think that Abraham must have had an amazing relationship with God, that he was able to trust him, trust him on the journey, 
even when they'd had to wait such a long time to be able to have a child, even though they'd waited a long time and had no children. Abraham was trusting God. He was trusting him for that future plan. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm impressed by that kind of faith. And once again, Abraham is talking with God and God renews that promise of a future with him. And he takes him outside in the evening and they look up to the stars. And he says to Abraham, try counting them. Count those stars. Can you see how many there are? My promise to you is that your family will be as numerous as the stars in the sky. Now, Abraham and Sarah had already been waiting such a long time. And when, he, when God had said to Abraham, I promise you are going to be the father of many nations and I'm going to change your name, actually, from Abram to Abraham. And you will have a family of your own. And Abraham's thinking, do you know what? I'm 99 years old. I don't even think that's possible. And Abraham laughs. And then there's this, this amazing encounter that they have with three visitors that come to visit Abraham and Sarai. Well, she's still Sarai. And Sarah, Sarai, is promised that within a year she will have a baby son. Well, when she hears that message, she does the same thing as Abraham. She laughs. It's like, I'm so old. How can I have a baby like that? Really, I'm so old. But God is faithful. And he promised something to Abraham and Sarah. That's why their names were changed. He promised them a future. That meant they were going to have a family. And a year from when Sarah laughed, she did indeed give birth to a son and they named him Isaac which means laughter I think that's a pretty cool name to give to a child that you waited 24 years to have well actually she waited a lot longer than that when you think that she was 90 what an incredible true story and this story teaches us something it teaches us the importance of trusting God for our future. God promises us a future. And I don't know what that future might mean for you. It might mean a career. It might mean one day moving. It might mean being a missionary somewhere overseas. It might mean going through a long period of time where you wait and it seems like God isn't really doing anything to fulfill that promise, just like Abraham and Sarah. But this story proves to me that we can trust God and we can trust the promises for us. We can trust God's promises for a future. That leads us to um, a verse in the Bible that I believe is just for you today. And it's Jeremiah 29 verse 11. And some of you may have heard this before. And it says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And that's what I believe God wants to do for you today. He wants to give you the promise of a future that no matter what you might go through, you can believe and trust that God will be faithful that, to that promise. And that brings us to our big idea for today, which is God promises us a future. And I believe it. Do you? God promises us a future. Now, I think it'd be great if we can just spend a moment to pray. Because I want you to Put it into your heart, this whole idea that God promises you a future and you can trust him. You can trust him with that plan. You can trust him in the waiting. You can trust him in the hard times. So let's pray now. Hi God, 
I want to thank you for the story in the Bible today. It helps us to understand that you are a God of promises and you promise us a future. Abraham and Sarah had to wait. Maybe we have to wait too. But we can trust you. We can have a relationship with you that helps us to trust you no matter what. So this week, this month, this year, will you help the children to really understand that they can trust you with the promise that you have a future for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Now there's one more prayer that I would like to give you an opportunity to pray with me today. You see, Abraham had a relationship with God that enabled him to trust the future plan that God had for him. I don't think Abraham could have waited 24 years without having that kind of a relationship with God. And I want to give you the opportunity today to make that relationship with God for yourself. And it requires us acknowledging a few things. First, that Jesus really is God's son, that he died and rose again to forgive our sins, to give us a way to have relationship with him. It's kind of simple, really. We admit, we believe, and we choose. So I'm going to say a prayer today. You might want to just say it quietly in your head. But if this is something that you want to do, if you want to have the kind of relationship with God that Abraham had, that enabled him to trust that future promise that he has for you, then I invite you to just quietly say this prayer in your heart. Heavenly Father, you are the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You sent your only Son to earth to die for me, to forgive my sins so that I could be in relationship with you. I choose today to accept you as my Savior. I want to choose to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen.